Hello, friends. Today's special episode is one about remembrance. You may recall our very special friend, Eugene, friend of the show, one who shared his inspirational message with each and every one of us just this last summer. Now, some of you may have heard about Eugene's untimely passing. He was such a kind and devout young man, and we could hang our heads in sorrow, or we could embrace his life and celebrate young Eugene with this beautiful Eugene Memorial Garden. I'm sure you're all aware that your generous donations are helping fund the construction of the beautiful New Shepherd Ministries. Together, you and I are building a place where we can walk hand in hand in Jesus' name. Now normally, construction of the gardens would have been one of the very last steps in the building of the New Shepherd Ministry. But out of respect for Eugene, well, out of respect for him, thought it best to go ahead and complete that phase first. Now, the rest of the construction of the complex is still underway, and it is all due to your generous donations. So please, keep sending them in. Now let's take this journey together, you and I, hand in hand, and let's celebrate Eugene. Eugene had a troubled life, trouble with his family, and yes, trouble with the law. Eugene was a simple but complicated man. He found himself in trouble with the law, found himself in the penitentiary. And when he was released from jail, went out in the parking lot. Not a soul to give him a ride. And no one there to give that young man direction in his life. Eugene returned to his childhood home to reunite with his mama, only to find his home being torn down to make room for a frozen yogurt confectionery. Found a bag of clothes by the side of the road and started to put them on it so he could walk away from the life he once knew. God bless him. Hello, Irvin. It's Eugene. Eugene? Your brother, Eugene. Sorry. Sorry, Eugene. It's, has, has stuff. Yeah, why is Mama's house getting knocked down? They let you out. Yeah, I wrote Mama a letter. Nobody was there to pick me up. So I go to her house, it's getting knocked down. Irvin. Sorry to have to say it like this. We thought you'd be in there for a couple more years. Mama died last spring. So who's been getting my letters? I don't know, they've been coming here, but we've been in, we, we ain't been opening them in for us. Can I come stay with you for a little while? How about I send you some money and get back up on your feet?
headed down a troubled path. The alcohol dulled the pain. But that isn't what that young man needed. There's no time to waste. Just pay separate shipping and processing, and we'll double the order. That's two of the most days never before seen. Canning spectacular with a low one-time price of $19.95. Call our toll-free number now and speak to a true legit. And that's what had happened, my friends, through divine intervention. Friends, today I wanted to talk to you and ask you a few questions because I've been there. I know what you're feeling. Let me ask you, do you feel like the world is against you? That, that whatever you do, you can't do right? I have some good news for you today, folks. Did you know that God's Spirit not only lives inside of me, but He lives inside of every one of you? Take up arms for God, because He loves you. He wants you to carry His Spirit it is such a beautiful thing. Look how happy I am because God flows through me. Jesus flows through me. You too can have the same light that I do. He loves you. He can save you. I can save you. So even in your darkest hour, you need to know we're here for you. You know, you know this part, part I, I really don't, don't like, like to bring, bring up. up. But, but in, in order, order to do the work, work that I do, Eugene had no one but himself and us. Now, why he didn't call, pick up the phone, send us an email, write us a letter, I'll never know. Face to face for a man like Eugene is what counted. So he sought us out. Stay away. What's the money was for? Yeah, but something extraordinary has happened since then. Uh, I kind of found my path, and I, I'd like to talk to you about it. Where the hell did you find me anyway? Jumping phone book. So I have those? Yeah. Is that your baby? Uh huh. So I'm an uncle. Can I say hi? No, no, I don't think so. Let's, uh, let's have a seat and talk about it. Sure. <clears throat> hey, Ben. Oh, well, you know, um, it was a little rocky at first, coming come back and finding Mama's house like that, and uh, Mama gone and yeah. all that. But, yeah, let's... About the ring. <laughs> Notice that. Well, that's, that's Daddy's old ring. You know, I found it with 
some of his other stuff outside of the house before it got knocked down. And uh, I'm wearing it as a symbol of my newfound devotion to Jesus. That's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm pretty excited about it. It's a big man. Well, have you ever seen Garner Bynum? He's, he's that fellow on TV late at night. No? Um, well, I was watching him the other day, and his words really moved me. You know, they really spoke to me. I feel like I kind of have a, a path now. So I'm trying to get to Silver Hills, Utah, because um, that's where he is. I, I need to talk to him. Um, and I was hoping that either I could, you know, maybe you could front me the money to get a bus ticket, or perhaps uh, uh, we, we could take a, a road trip or something. Now, yeah, Eugene, I just, I just don't think we got any extra money right now. Uh, what I can do for you is got the wife's old bike. Now it's old, but it works. It'll get you there quicker than walking. Okay. Well. Okay. Um. Other question I have for you is, do you? happen to have any cigarettes I, pick, I picked up the habit and I ran out and then I don't have any money to buy hey Gene I don't smoke um why don't you just chew some gum or something I don't have any gum either well, I do just got the one piece but it's all yours don't eat it all in one place Split it up, save it. Thank, thanks. Yeah, Irvin. Yeah. Let me get you that bike. Say you, man. You want to ride? Thank you. Well, thanks. Come on. It's a cheap cab. <laughs> Faster than a bicycle. <laughs> Just get in. Just get in. I only got five bucks. Come on, get in. Just get in.
No, 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 no bike, no bike. Trying to get to Silver Hills, so uh, five dollars that way. Let me ask you: Have you ever ever had somebody just totally break your heart? You know, and not not just you know some friend, but somebody you grew up with, your your brother perhaps. Yeah. No, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm trying to stay positive, you know. I found a uh, found source of inspiration. You ever seen, um, you ever seen Garner Bynum, Reverend, on uh, um, late night television? No? Just check him out. He's, he's cool. Um, really cool. You know, I'm try that's where I'm trying to go. I'm trying to get to Reverend Garner Bynum. So, I appreciate you picking me up, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I was, I was hesitant, uh, you know, but I uh, haven't had a lot of good luck for the last couple of days, so, yes. Like, you know, like, 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 uh, like Reverend Bonham says, be on the lookout for small miracles. <laughs> you know? Yeah. a small miracle? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not riding a bicycle. I'm out and about. And... No, it's nice. It's nice. Don't forget about your tip, by the way, because I, I only have five dollars, so just keep that in mind. Five bucks. I think I had a reasonable expectation of service here, and this is... Eugene slept on the streets with only the clothes on his back. Many a man would have just thrown his hands up and said, Lord, I give up. No, not Eugene.
need a ride? Take you anywhere you want to go. I think I'll just wait for the next one. Now Eugene looked only to his very own determination and occasionally the helping hand of fellow individuals. But he made it. He hitchhiked across this country of ours with that, with that drive, with that determination to learn a little bit more about our Lord. He made his way to Silver Hills. Eugene journeyed relentlessly. He was out there on the open road. Well, the sun beat down on him and it took its toll on him. But he was determined and he journeyed on. Wow, you, you've been out here for a while, huh? What, you want some water? But, hey, actually, I'm heading through Silver Hills if you want to hitch a ride. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I thought you liked some air. Tea? Well, yeah, you know, it's been a bit, uh... Yeah, I bet it's rough out there. Where, where are you coming from? Oh, what? Are, are you hungry? Do you want, you want some snacks? Here. Here. Hey, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Hey. You know, it's kind of nice to finally meet somebody who's... nice. <laughs> well, hey, my name's Rich. Mm. Eugene. Nice to meet you, Eugene. You too. So, what? This box is full of snacks. I Help yourself. I just snack on them while I'm driving. Okay. Appreciate that. So, uh, what's in Silver Hills, uh, family? Uh, no, I'm I'm going to, to find the Reverend Garner Bynum. Oh, the guy from TV? You know him? I, I mean... You've seen him. Yeah, of course. He, he's an inspiration. He is, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, I love that guy. I, I, 
I, I watch him until two o'clock in the morning, just sitting in my PJs watching him. Yeah. <laughs> well, but like I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm heading to Silver Hills and I'm already going through there, so I, I can drop you off. I, I just need to make one quick stop. So if that's okay with you. Sure. Yeah. Hey. I, you know, I really appreciate all this. If I can be any help, you just, you just let me know. Hey, can, can you hand me some of those nuts? My, my, I've got an aching sweet tooth. <laughs> Oh, th th this will just take five minutes. Oh, will you close the doors for me? Hey, Rich, I, um, I don't know if I like what's going on here. This is going to take one second. Do you, do you want any snacks? No, I'm okay. Any water? No, I'm, I'm all right. Okay. What are you doing here? What are you wanting from me? I don't have fear of you, you son of a bitch. Hey, I don't know them. Uh, I was just hitching a ride. Uh, would you mind giving me a ride back into town? Maybe. Now, Eugene met many a strange people on this path. People who questioned him, questioned his faith, questioned his determination. But Eugene pushed on. That's the kind of feller he was. Through the generosity of others, Eugene got himself a bus ticket. He made his way on that bus up to Silver Hills. Ah, oh, the views must have been just awe-inspiring on that journey. He got to see the beginning of the construction of the New Shepherd Ministry Complex. He must have fallen in love just on the way up the hill there.
having followed the trail like a crusading detective. Eugene found Ike. Now Ike, he is one of my most trusted members, usually behind the scenes. Eugene had followed the breadcrumbs behind Ike's car, but had somehow lost the trail. But he kept on. He kept on. a man would have given up, sat down, just threw in the towel. But not Eugene. No, sir, not Eugene. He kept fighting. He kept plugging along. He was so close. A man like Eugene never gives up. It's one of the reasons why I was so proud of him. Who are you? Aren't you going about him? What do you want? No, I'm, uh, I saw you on TV and I thought you might know what I should do with my life. To, um, this is a lot of pressure, but I'm a little out of sorts right now. Well, hello, friend. Uh, who is this man? Why, this is my right hand. His name is Ike. Look, is there anything we can do for you? Oh, my face hurts. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, I'm gonna have to go uh, have, have a smoke, I think. Okay? So bad was it? Look, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about Ike there. He sometimes can be a little overprotective. Well, that's, that's how I was kind of breaking into his house, I suppose. Oh, yeah, you were. Hey, look, um, we're getting ready to film our telecast right now. You want to go with us? See, see a filming of the, the show. And then I, um, yeah, yeah, and yes. I'm sorry, my face still hurts. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Uh, just like right now? Actually, it's, it's a lot of fun. So go grab your stuff and uh, meet us by the car. Hey, look, you don't, you don't need this thing. You don't need this. Well, yeah, it's been kind of a long, you know, I've been meaning to cut back, but uh, I, had, I haven't had, it's my. Now you've been healed. Okay. Come on. Thank you. Of course, now when introduced to a man of faith and integrity, well, naturally, I just took him right under my wing. And that's when I introduced him to the filming of our ministry.
This is a nice park. Yeah, it'll do. I, I, I kind of assumed that you would have a, a private set somewhere, not some place with people with barbecues and. Well, no, we we don't like to spend a whole lot of money. I I try to save the money so that I can do the work of the Lord. I see. I see. I'm not I'm not trying to be argumentative. That's yeah. I think it's I think it's wonderful, and I think it's really on on the, on TV. It's it's gorgeous. It's a way to save money and be responsible with our followers' donations. Okay. You know I've I don't know how to. I don't really know how to ask this, but I've, I've noticed you don't have an accent like you do on... Oh! <laughs> well, see, the accent is about... Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Our donations go up when I use the accent. We've tracked it. It's about 17%. People have a tendency to trust me more when I have a, a more friendly voice. Hello, friend. Yeah, see, that's, that's the voice I know. See, that's what they do. They like this voice, they trust me more, and they send more money in. It's really kind of nice. So that's what I use, and uh, you know, it's all about bringing in um, followers. So I just go over by the cameraman and, and watch? Yeah, he's up there, he's uh, getting everything ready. And why don't you uh, go see if you can learn something over there. I appreciate this. Thanks. It sure is hot out here, you know that? All right, we about ready? We good? All right. We love him because he loved us first. That's right, we're talking about God here. Now, I'd like to go into that just a little bit. Are you afraid of love? Because I'm not. I love to be loved, and you should be too. There is no fear in love, my friends, because, oh, there is no fear in love, my friends, because love casteth out fear over there, far away from you and from me. Recognize the uh, baptismal font? Oh, I didn't see that episode. I don't. So it's a great episode. Listen, you can order the back episodes for their 1995 on the website. I didn't know that. Kevin, <laughs> sit with me. Well, what did you think of that? That was special, you know. I mean. I've never seen the way they make, a, make something for TV before. That was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? It was. It was nice. Well, it's, it's nice having one of my flock come and, and see what it is that we do. So tell me about yourself. What uh, Have you got some, some friends, some family in town? Uh, well, my, I mean, sounds a little creepy. <laughs> I, I kind of just came into town to find you. I don't really know anybody here. You, you, say. you well, <clears throat> I don't want you to take this the wrong way or anything, but uh, I actually have been invited over to a dinner tonight, and I think it'd be great if you joined me. What do you think? You want me to come to dinner with you? Okay, have you got a place to stay? No. Okay, maybe we can help you with that, too. Okay. But you're hungry, right? Yeah, um, yes. Sorry. Sorry to hesitate. Yes. Okay. Sounds, sounds great. All right, let's go. Yes, sir. Now, a man can survive on faith alone. A man can sustain his soul on faith alone. But I couldn't greedily keep him all to myself. I knew the generosity of my flock. So I let him be shared. 
Well, I, I was thinking you need like a big crucifix, and I could I could help you make that. You know, big wooden. Now that sounds great. However, we're going in another direction. We're looking at some sort of special effects where we'll bring a bunch of light. Hi. <laughs> Hello, friends. Hi. Welcome. Good to see you. I hope you don't mind. I brought a special friend with me here tonight. Listen, I was wondering if maybe he could take a shower. Sure. sure. And maybe borrow one of your shirts. Okay. okay. Oh, that would be wonderful. See, I told you they're nice folks. Uh, thank you. Mm, yeah. Hope it all fits. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the clothes, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry it's so wrinkly. It's been in the bottom drawer since Mother died. But it looks really good on you. I think Mother would approve. I'm glad. Let us pray. We'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you for this food, thank you for our wonderful hosts, and for our most special guest. Amen. 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 Okay. So, Eugene, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, what uh, would you like to know? Well. Before you came out today, what were you doing before? I mean, earlier today, yesterday, last week. Tell me about you. Well, I don't, I don't want to lie to you, so... Um, I appreciate that. Before I started coming to try to find you, I was, uh, I was in prison. Oh, goodness. Yes, sir. What for? Uh, well, um, I, I, I was a drunk driver and I um, ended up running somebody over. Lemonade. You, you killed a man? Yes. Sir. Well, that is interesting. You know, we've been looking for a man quite a bit like you. To help in our ministry, and I think maybe, maybe you ought to come on the telecast, share your story. I think people need to know. Have you been changed by this event? I, I suppose. Well, you sought out the Lord, or He sought you out. You're supposed to be working for the Lord. I think that's wonderful. Oh. Oh, well, this is good. Heck, that's last supper good. Did, did you know that when you came here, when you first got here, I was feeling the spirit. Really? What are you feeling now? Oh. I can really feel the spirit now. Really? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, I think I can too, I think. Yeah. I think Jesus is flowing through me right now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Are you uh, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, you uh, yes. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. oh God. Oh. You feel Jesus flowing yeah. through me? Yes, oh. I can feel it. Oh, I'll oh. let Jesus inside of you. Oh, yes. Let Jesus inside of you. Let Jesus in. Oh, yes. Oh, are you feeling that? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, He's so great. Isn't he? Oh, that feels wonderful. Oh. Now, when I met Eugene, I could see his heart was just bursting with love. Poor man just needed some guidance. And I want to thank God Almighty for allowing me to be that guiding light for that young man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Eugene, how'd you like to be part of my broadcast? Yeah, you and me. I think we'll make a good team. Uh, yeah. All right. You hurry up and get yourself ready. You know what? I think Ike has a, a suit and a tie you could wear. Okay? I'll see you out here in a minute. Stay close to me, and we're gonna make a boatload of money here today, okay? Is that what? All right. You think I should have them open or closed? I kind of like when you do like that there. That looks real nice. That okay. Looks real nice. Pull that down just. Oh, there you go. Ready? Okay. No, you're not ready. Oh. <laughs> Hello, friends. Today. We have a very special treat. This is my very good friend, Eugene. Come on up here, Eugene. You tell it from your heart. You hear me, son? I, I, I will try. You're going to do good. You're going to okay, do real okay. good. Um, as, uh, as Garner Bynum, uh, the Reverend, said, my name is Eugene. I'm trying to think how to get into the particulars of what. Um, I had an, a normal life, you know, not not anything that any time. I had a, a, a happy childhood. I had a, a loving family. Um, we didn't really have any faith, per se. I didn't find that until later. Now, I just, to be honest, I just got out of uh, prison last week. Um, I served five years. For, it's, it's easier to be forgiven than it is to, to forgive oneself, I, I believe. But that's not exactly the message I'm, I'm here to spread. The message is, I didn't find religion in prison. I found religion the day after I got out. I was in a hotel room, back to my old tricks, and Garner Bynum came on the TV and he spoke to me, and, and he, he touched my soul. As I know, he, he touches all of yours. So I, I encourage all of you yeah, look at you, making this place look nice. Hey, listen, that broadcast yesterday, donations are way up. You did a beautiful job. Oh, we've been getting a lot of phone calls. As a matter of fact, your old uh, uh, roommate or cellmate, I guess is what he said. Um, yeah. Give him a call. Nice job. Hey, thanks. Eugene had found new friends, a new life. He had begun to forget about his old life and his old troubles. Now had some of them folks from his old life been in touch with him, they, they would have seen a changed man. They would have seen this beautiful man standing in front of him wanting to serve God. My old lady made some sandwiches. Hey, she sounds nice. Yeah, you know, I uh, I saw you on the TV, and uh, boy, I was pretty surprised. You you look pretty different. You 
you cleaned up and shaved and cut your hair. Yeah, I look a little different. Things have changed a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I was surprised. Um, I don't know. I, I just didn't, uh, you never really seemed like the kind of person that needed saving, I guess. I mean, you never really were much of a criminal. Well, you know, things have been doing, I got out and things were going all right, I suppose. Um, well, turns out my mom's dead. Okay. And my brother doesn't want to have anything to do with me. So, yeah, I didn't have a lot going for me. Um, but then, thankfully, I found, a, you know, inspiration, if you will. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Reverend. I actually... Yes, uh, the Reverend. Reverend Garner Bynum. He's, he's an inspiration to me. How long, how long have you known the Reverend? Well, known, um, I just, disc I discovered the Reverend, uh, about a week ago. A week. And what do you, uh, what do you do? What do you do for the Reverend? I just do whatever. Eugene, I don't know how to tell you this, but the Reverend's a con man. All right, he's a con man. He he takes money from people. Okay, that's that's what he he spent time up at the state pen. I know somebody that shared a room with him up there. That doesn't sound that doesn't sound like like the Reverend I know. Yeah, I, I I know Eugene. That's why they call him con artists. Okay, he's gonna convince you that he's a good guy, get you to do a bunch of this work for him for free. I mean, it's one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you. I don't know if I'm comfortable with this conversation. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I just realized something. <clears throat> What's that? This here is the first time that you and I have shared a meal not behind bars. That's kind of special, isn't it? I think you're, uh, I think you're absolutely right. It, it fits about the same level of quality, too. I mean, Shelly, you know, she... She means well, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying my sandwich. Yeah? Servants are standing by. <laughs> we are gonna make a fortune on this. <laughs> look at that thing, look, look, look. Eugene, this uh, this ain't what it looks like. Uh, this is uh, this is a rehabilitation program I, I participate in, and, and I have some of the lost souls come in and look, Eugene. These girls need help. 
and I'm here to help them. I can teach you all of this. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, Reverend. I'm having a hard time believing all this. I can I can have you come in here and see what the work He's is. He's gonna be coming back, Sam. You only paid for an hour. Um, honey, listen. Why don't uh, why don't you just go pack up your things and head on, okay? Mm -hmm. Ah, this is the Lord's work. Okay. Tell you what. Let me um, let me take you to a real nice meal. Okay. We can talk about all of this. I just I I've got to get cleaned up here and. Um, we'll say our final prayers and um, and I'll take you to get some meat, okay? Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm gonna wait for you out there, okay? Hmm. Well, these are good, aren't they? You're a fraud, ain't you? Yep. Wanna be my partner? So what do you think? What? Oh, come on! Now Eugene's faith was never shaken. No, not sir, not 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 even for one moment. He was a man of faith. And I can attest to that. I can testify to that. I know that's a pretty outrageous claim, but he was a man of God. And I I let him go out on his own, to preach on his own, to share what his heart was telling him. And he had a congregation, he had a following, Eugene did albeit a very small group of people, he was starting to build his flock before the terrible, terrible accident. my friends, if Eugene were alive today, you know what he'd tell you? He'd say, how do I, no, he'd say, find out how you can help. Now, well, we are still under construction here. Phone numbers are still good. Our phones are always up. Website, well, it is under construction. It's still, still up. Hey, our, our address. Oh, geez, can you cut that out? Do not be afraid. Do not be scared or terrified either, because the Lord will be with you wherever you go. He follows me. It's okay to lean on the Lord. The Lord will set you straight on your path. Now, if you feel like you kind of skitty womp us a little bit, he's right there. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Jesus loves you. He wants good things for you. He wants to bless you with beautiful women, if that's what you want. He wants to bless you with lots of money, if that's what you want. He wants to bless you with a puppy, if that's what you want. He can be your light 
and your salvation too. We need to get donations to help fund these wonderful things that we do, our outreach programs, my car, the place that I live. So won't you give kindly?